My friends, it is time. We have waited so long for a set that perfectly encapsulates our greatest struggles. Tryhards, viruses, hackers, microtransactions. Let us see this set not as an embarrassment, but as a gift, as a sign. A sign that reminds us that no matter how many times we have to click respawn, no matter how many frames we drop, no matter how many times we get trolled, no matter how many times we get hacked on, no matter how many times we lag out because of a terrible internet connection, gamers always get back up to face the challenge. My fellow friends, my fellow gamers, it is time we show our strength. Play a game, any game. Play something that makes you feel something, anything. Get that bag of Lay's chips or Doritos you've been saving in your secret stash and set aside that homework and start gaming because you don't care about your GPA and you know it. My fellow friends, my fellow gamers, the time has come. True gamers may rage quit, but they always come back because they have nothing better to do. Gamers fall, but they also rise. With that said, I now say to you all, GAMERS, RISE UP! Before this video continues, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legend. Hello everybody, Mr. LEGO Lover 55 here, and welcome to another LEGO set review. Today we're taking a look at our first 2020 Ninjago set, set 71708. The GAMERS MARKET! You know, a lot of people are really skeptical about this season, but I mean, if they pull it off right, it can be amazing. But anyways, the set's recommended for ages 7 and up, and has around 218 pieces. And now, this is a $30 set, so the price to part ratio isn't exactly, uh, existent. But it's made up for all in the figures. Look at how many figures there are! But anyways, taking a look at the box, we've got the uh, Lego Ninjago logo on the side as they are doing that now. I still really like that they're doing that. I really just think it adds to the aesthetic. Sort of a spicing up the box art a bit for after uh, probably like seven, eight years, however long Ninjago's been going on for. Then we got uh, Jay up there in the corner. And then of course, picture of the actual set and then all the Figures at the bottom. Geez, that's a lot of figures. Then on the back of the box, it just shows not really play features since there really aren't a whole lot of play features with this set, but it just shows some of the little scenarios you can uh, get your figures into. And then I don't normally point off the top of the box, but I'm gonna do it this time because there's so many figures and there's the names for all of them. So yeah, anyways, let's, let's open this set up. I'm excited. I guess sort of uh, while I'm opening this up, I, I kind of want to talk about uh, my thoughts for season 12 or it's quote unquote season two or whatever of Ninjago. A lot of people are skeptical, but I do think it can be done right if, and only if, they go all in with the gamer aspects. I, I talked about this on Twitter and then I posted the tweet on Discord, but basically what I would like to see is for the writers to just embrace the gamerness of the season. If they're doing a gamer season, they need to go all in. I I'm talking video game references and relatable gamer moments. Just gonna wait for the garage because it's ruining the audio as per usual. So basically, the writing, it could be whatever for the season. All I want to see from it is that they just make it extremely relatable to gamers, I guess is the best way to put it. Although that's probably not the best way to put it. Again, I'm not good with words. Anyways, we got a bag one, we got a bag uh, number two, and we got a bag uh, three. Oh yeah, and then sticker chic. God, there's so many stickers in this set. What? Or wait, no, there's not a lot of stickers. Okay, it looks like there's a lot of stickers, but this is just one large sticker. Okay, okay, that, that, that kind of tricked me up for a second. And then of course the instruction manual. One thing I will point out was that the sticker sheets for this uh, year of Ninjago has got extra stickers. So it's like, it's like DLC stickers or something, kind of. So now I actually have a reason to keep my sticker sheets. Not that I kept them before. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna build this set up and I'll be back, you know, the usual. I think I'm gonna watch some gaming videos too, just to get in the gamer mood. Y y you know how it is if you're a gamer. GAMER TRANSITION! Okay, so here's the set all built up, and as you can see, uh, yeah, they're, they're, 
there's not very much stuff to this, at least build-wise. And that's mainly because the bulk of this set is the figures, and we'll, we'll take a look at the figures later, but for now let's take a look at just like the builds. So there are three main builds and then a small little side build. The small little side build we have here is just a little uh, power-up thing or whatever for this uh, cool blade looking thing. I don't know what these are officially called, but they look really cool honestly. These feel like the ideal sort of techno blade, not gonna lie. Like, don't get me wrong, the techno blades from season three were pretty cool looking, but this this looks better, kind of. And I really like how they did this sort of a stand. They just have like a little question mark and they just have the, the thing in. I think that's a really cool idea. Then over here we got this little uh, weapon stand, which looks really cool. You can uh, spin this thing. Fun. And then it's just got a little display of uh, all of these different weapons, so that's pretty cool. And then you got more weapons at the back. You got these like swords and stuff, and then more swords, and then there's more swords here on the front, and then there's a knife, and what the heck? Then this uh, middle build here is, uh, I don't know. I guess it can be seen as like some sort of entryway to somewhere, but uh, it doesn't really, you don't really get the the wear, I guess, besides the, the rest of this market here. I will say though, it looks pretty cool, especially with this uh, turquoise, what, 6x6 six six plate or tile? That's a pretty cool piece to get. I've never gotten any of these large tiles before, so uh, it's pretty cool for my first one to be in turquoise as well, so that's pretty cool. Unfortunately though, it does have a sticker on top of it, so uh, yeah, thanks. I hate it. Although, to be fair, the sticker doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty cool, actually. I'm just mad because I, I don't like putting on stickers. And then on the box, I guess it does show you can, like, put the little thing there on that uh, tile. Kind of. Then this last little build here is probably my favorite. It's just a little, I guess, item market, as it says, of course. Here you've got uh, Pink Ninja Zane, which we'll take a look at later, but I'm pretty sure you can put just any figure you want there, so you can you can put any figure there you want, and then you can have it cost 125 credits, so that's pretty neat. That is a sticker, not a print, but it's a pretty cool sticker, and pretty useful one, I guess. As for the rest of this, you got some other stuff. You got a bunch of hats. It's a bunch of hats. You got a top hat, a knight's helmet, a... Uh, Whatever that is. And then you got a classic 80s space helmet uncracked. It's Benny's space helmet, but it's uncracked, which is amazing. So a lot of space fans are probably gonna like to get this. Then you have this uh, rice hat in gold, which I, I think we've gotten before, but I mean, hey, pretty new. Actually, I don't know if we've gotten that before, so uh, still pretty cool to get, pretty cool, pretty cool. Character DLC time! First up here we have DigiJ, and he is a pretty cool looking figure, not gonna lie. I honestly do really like the look of these uh, Digi suits. I think they just all look really cool, especially just with all the, the white armor. I feel like I, the white's a nice highlight. One thing I don't like, however, is that uh, all of them, I'm pretty sure all of them, have like one arm that's completely white. And you know, every once in a while, I, I like some asymmetry, you know, but I feel like this is one of those times where, you know, it just, it, it should have stayed symmetrical, you know? The armor's, you know, the armor's symmetrical, the mask is symmetrical, almost, except for the print. So I feel like the arm should have been symmetrical as well. But uh, yeah, this is the weapon that he gets. It's pretty cool. It's got that nice uh, trans neon green chain. It's got that controller hilt, so that's cool. Of course, Jay's got that uh, gamer tag up there, or maybe it's a health bar, I don't know. I like to think of it as a gamer tag, cause well, Gamer tag's more fun to say, but uh, yeah, he's also got these uh, ghost green katanas, as I like to call that color. And this is what he looks like from the back. That's how that uh, gamer tag piece connects. And this is what he looks like without all that armor. That's what he looks like without his mask on. And then he does have an alternate face print, which is pretty cool. And I will point out that these uh, armor pieces are a hard plastic, uh, which is uh, interesting because most of the time the ninja armor is like a soft plastic, but this time around, it's a hard plastic, which is amazing. Next up here, we have Red Visor and, uh, hmm, 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 uh, wonder how they came up with that name. Although the name of this one is very generic, and I'm pretty sure these guys are just like generic, uh, just generic bad guy army builders or whatever. It's a pretty cool looking minifigure, not gonna lie. Like, uh, Jay, he's also got, uh, the health bar, or 
gamer tag, whatever you want to call it, but this time it's in trans neon orange, which makes it which makes it cooler. And instead of ghost green katanas, he's got red ones. And instead of that white armor piece, he's got it in black. Oh yeah, and he's got a gun. Just like a gun. Don't ask me what type of gun. I'm not a gun expert. Then of course you can well, kind of lift up the visor a little bit. It's not like all the way, like that's about as much as you can do it, or at least as it's meant to. But if you want, you can just take off the helmet to get a better look at that face print, which, ooh, that looks good. That is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that's the Prime Empire logo because that's what it, that's what it, is up on like the, the build or whatever. So pretty cool, pretty cool. And then there's all of his stuff taken off and uh, if you turn him around, you can get a better look at his back torso printing, which has also got the 404, which is also on the front side, which is pretty cool. And then he's got a cool, creepy alternate face. That's, that's honestly really cool looking and kind of creepy, not gonna lie. This here is uh, uh, uh this uh, Richie, yeah, I totally didn't look at the box for that. I mean, hey, it's a new character. You can't expect me to know the name right off the top of my head, all right? But uh, yeah, he's got the, the same armor piece, the same uh, gamer tag piece. But uh, yeah, this guy is uh, a furry. He's a furry. Uh, instead of red katanas, he's got like these orange ones. I think these are orange, at least. There's a better look at his uh, back printing there. He's got, he's got like a little digital heart there or something. And then there's his front printing, and hold on. Is that... Sans? Megalovania intensifies! Okay, I'm gonna try to go through the rest of these kind of rapid fire because I feel like this video is gonna be a little too long because, I mean, there's a lot of figures, all right? So I'm rambling, so let's get to it. So this here is, a. Uh, Scott. He's a, he's a guy. He has a face that kind of looks like uh, Lloyd's, not gonna lie. Looks a little weird. Then his back face print, uh, he's got like a little thing around his mouth. I guess like a mask, sort of. Bandana, or wh whatever those things are called. Pretty neat back printing. I mean, yeah, he's got like a jacket, some cool pants. I don't know what else to say. I mean, he does have this, uh, Hidden Side, uh, hood that was, or well, he has this, uh, hood that was used for Jack from Hidden Side, so that's pretty cool. Then we have Avatar Nia! Oh, uh, she's, uh, yeah, it's Nia, and then in a diver suit. Neat. I don't know if I've ever gotten, uh, I don't know if I've ever gotten this piece before, so nice to get it now, I guess. Her face print is nothing new. It's the same one we've, I think, pretty much been getting. It's It's got that one and that one, and yeah, so that, that, that that's Nia. Then here we have Rocky Danger Buff, and, uh, yeah, it's Rocky Danger Buff. It's totally not cool. This is a completely different person. Com completely different person. He's got a, a, a plaid or, or whatever, a flannel. I, I think that's what these are called. Pretty neat. He's got, he's dual wielding pickaxes. He's ready to play Minecraft. And then he's got this uh, cool coal hair. So yeah, it's nice to get this in some cheaper, more recent sets. So neat. And then of course he's got uh, a mustache and then this is his Alternate facial expression, of course, mustache on both sides cuz he's Rocky Danger Buff, not Cole. And then here we have Harumi! Uh, uh, why is she here again? And last up here, we have the main reason everyone's gonna get this set. It's, it's Pink Ninja Zane. This is a figure a lot of people, myself included, have been waiting for for a very long time. Honestly, I'm surprised they never made this figure any sooner, but I mean, hey, we have it now, so that's what matters. Unfortunately, it doesn't use the uh, the original Zane face, so a lot of people are gonna be upset about, cause everyone always wants to be upset about something with Ninjago. But I mean, hey, just find an original Zane head and replace this one. Easy fix. Don't complain about it. If you don't have one, just go find one on Bricklink. I'm sure they're pretty cheap. I mean, what, they were only used in at least more than 20 sets, so it's a pretty common face. I'm pretty sure it was used in some sets outside of Ninjago too. But uh, yeah, he's also got these silver shurikens, which is pretty cool, and then of course the pink ninja mask. That's that's cool to get. Unfortunately though, he is using the same Ninjago movie face print. It would be nice to get a new face print uh, instead of just this one. 
And then this creepy one that no one wants to use. Like, who wants to even use that face print? I mean, maybe it makes sense if they want to use it for, like, Ninjago movies, Zane. But not, not for TV shows, Zane. No one likes that face print. Hashtag, give Zane a new face. Okay, so not gonna lie, I, I kind of almost forgot to go over this figure. Because uh, he was in the stand. But, I mean, also, to be fair, he's a little kind of a forgettable character of this set. So you can't blame me. So, uh, yeah, here we have, uh, Mr., uh... Karloff looking guy? Wait, let me look at the box. Is this is this actually Karl? It's Okino. No, it's Okino. Completely new, different, and original character. Totally not using Karloff's face print. Okay, yeah, no, but it, it is actually using Karloff's face print. Like, come on, Lingo. I mean, if they're reusing an um, another, I guess, sort of major character's face print, then this guy must be like a background character or something. Unless their budget is just going really downhill or something. Which I honestly wouldn't be too surprised. But I mean, hey. I mean, this figure isn't all too bad. It's just, it's forgettable, you know? It's, it's just kind of forgettable. It's, that's what it looks like. It's got this little sack there and then... It's got that cool new, uh, hair piece, which I think was used for, like, the main villain of this, uh, season. I, I don't- I forgot his name, okay? All these new characters' names, I can't really remember. I mean, hey, we haven't got the season yet, so they can't be memorable if I haven't watched the season. GAMER TRANSITION! So, overall, this is a set made for gamers, by gamers. Also minifigure fans, I, I guess that too. But, but mostly gamers. I mean, this set pretty much just perfectly encapsulates what I would really like to see from season 12, which is just for this entire season to just go full on gamer. And I just really like the idea of uh, the ninja having all these uh, different avatars. So I think that's a cool idea. But uh, yeah, overall the figures in this set are really cool. Some of them I just don't really, I mean, care for. Or like, just question. I mean, like this guy, he's cool. I'm pretty sure he's exclusive, but I just, I know, I don't, I don't really care. He's not cool looking enough. He doesn't have sands on his torso. And then there's Harumi, which I mean, I, I don't even know why she's here. Why the heck is she alive? I, th I think she's exclusive to this ad, at least the torso and leg printing. But I mean, again, what? what? Why does she have to be here? The rest of the figures, though, I think are pretty cool looking. Like the two, uh, I think, what, what, Richie and Red Visor? Yeah, those guys look cool. Digi J looks awesome. Scott, I mean, not as cool looking as them, but still pretty, pretty neat looking, I guess. Avatar, Nia, and Cole, I mean, there, there's nothing really exclusive or, I guess, new about them. But, I mean, hey, it's their avatars, so... Pretty neat, I guess, to get. And then there's freaking Pink Ninja Zane, the main reason why this set is worth $30. Need I say more? But uh, yeah, speaking of that, this set does cost $30, and the, the, the main builds of this set aren't really anything all too special. I mean, they're cute, neat little builds, but I mean, like, they're not $30 worth of builds. And unfortunately, a lot of the budget for this set, I guess, went into, or a lot of the cost for this set is going into the minifigures. Because, I mean, to be fair, you're getting, like, freaking seven or eight minifigures in this set. Nine minifigures, I can count. And to be fair, some of those figures have, like, new molds and also new prints and everything, so some of them are exclusive. So, again, it's, it's like one of those LEGO City People Pack sets. I mean, I'm pretty sure those cost, like, $40, though, which is expensive. I mean, to be fair, City's always really expensive. So it's pretty neat to get one, one of these, I guess, sort of, quote-unquote, people packs that cost uh, only $30. And although the side builds are not really anything all too special, they're, they're still pretty cool builds, not gonna lie. Although I do wish they had, like, some sort of way to connect to each other. I think that would be pretty cool. But I mean, hey, you can't ask too much from a set with tons of cool figures. I was gonna say $20 set, but then I realized that this wasn't a $20 set. I forgot, it's $30, okay? Shut up. But I mean, yeah, I don't have a whole lot else to say about this set. I recommend this for gamers and minifig lovers. Mostly gamers, though. This set is made for gamers. But anyways, that's about all I have to say, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and keep building.